Good morning and welcome everyone. Dear Mr. Defense Attaché, dear speakers from Cameroon, China, Namibia, Samoa, South Africa, Tanzania, Togo, New Zealand, the United States and Germany. Dear partners and contributors from the TU Munich and e-commerce Germany, your guests and participants here in Munich and online. We are very delighted to welcome you to our conference, Monuments and Sites, the Colonial Methods and Strategies of Dealing with the Architectural Heritage of the German Colonial Era. It's a pleasure to be here and to spend two days immersed in a challenging but important topic in the context of an international collaborative and hopefully enlightening event. I'm curious to learn about part of German global history that seems to be underrepresented in the public discourse. I'm curious about the built relics of this time and their full spectrum of significance for today's societies. I'm especially curious to hear the voices of today's heirs to these monuments and sites and to engage in conversation with you. Our focus is on strategies of appropriation and critical communication of these buildings with reference to the German colonial period from about 1880 to 1920. Compared to other European powers, the German colonial empire was smaller and short-lived, but no less cruel. And Germany played a decisive role in the division of the world among the European powers. The prime example of these efforts was the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885. More than a hundred years ago, as a result of the Treaty of Versailles, Germany had to give up its colonies. This ended the German colonial period, but not the colonial period in the form of colonies. Many people are still waiting for official reactions on the German side, for apologies and recognition. The German federal president, Frank Walter Steinmeier, has just agreed at a meeting with the Tanzanian president, Samia Sulu Hassan, that, he will, uh, that we will deal with this dark chapter and that we will deal with it together. He also spoke out in favor of expanding knowledge about the colonial past, especially in Germany, as the atrocities of the German colonial occupation overshadow the shared history. I take this as a promising sign of progress and hope that it will soon happen in other countries too. As Steinmeier rightly mentions, the German colonial period plays but a marginal role in school education and is barely present in public perception here in Germany. I wonder how widespread the ability is to identify the former colonial empire with parts of today's Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, Namibia, Cameroon, Gabon, Congo, the Central African Republic, Chad, Nigeria, Togo, Ghana, China, Papua New Guinea, Nauru, Palau, Marshall Islands, Samoa, the Northern Mariana Islands, and the Federate States of Micronesia. The sheer number of today's countries and territories that this gives some idea of the extent of this colonial legacy. And it is astonishing what kind of relics we find among these sites. The first German concentration camps were built in 1904 in Namibia. Tens of thousands of lives were forcibly ended here as part of the Herero and Lama genocide. In the former colonies, we find sites of violence and oppression, sites of administration and infrastructure to implement foreign rule, and sites of cultural propaganda. I wonder how the Nopas experience these sites today and how they deal with this largely unwanted heritage. Here I look forward to a respectful dialogue and unfortunately I have to make a reservation. So our focus is really on the built heritage. We will hardly be able to dive into political or legal issues um, or even official statements. But I guess we have enough to look into even with that restriction. In July 2020, the e-commerce Immersion Professional Working Group uh, yeah, and the uh, AG 2020 Working Group of e-commerce Germany initiated an international workshop on the topic of diversification and decolonization of cultural heritage. Clara and Louise Ravensmann were, among others, initiatives of this event, which in a way was a spark for today's conference. It should be seen as a part of e-commerce contribution to the promotion of decolonization and diversification of cultural heritage, and as an impetus for further research and exchange in this direction. And I hope that our discussions today and tomorrow 
will pave the way for future exchanges and corporations on this topic. So they recently announced the e-commerce Africa 24 conference in Nairobi in November 2024 uh, as a further step in this direction. Many people have contributed to making this conference possible. And I'm especially grateful to Michel Falser for his commitment on behalf of uh, TU Munich because of his expertise in this field and his broad network. He has been instrumental in developing a program that promises to address this topic in an excellent way. In addition, Gabriele Horn played a decisive role in supporting the conference topic within e-commerce Germany. She and John Ziesemer have done an outstanding job in getting this program off the ground and making this event a success. Jota Helmut played the string, pulled the strings as far as the overall organization was concerned and paid attention to the necessary details to accommodate each of you in the best possible way. Richa Elsa John, Danica Petrovic, Julia Makova, Cham Öktem, and Antonius Fiemann agreed last minute to lend us much appreciated help and hands, and we are grateful for your commitment. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for being here, for showing interest in this topic, and for being willing to participate in our conference. Let's have a fruitful time with an intense exchange in mutual respect and with eye-opening moments. Welcome and thank you very much. Honorable Tino Maga, the president of Ecomos Germany, honorable speakers from different, different countries present here, honorable delegates also from different countries present here, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I am a Brigadier General Joseph Bonifaz Kapumbe, a defense attaché from the Embassy of Tanzania in Berlin, Germany. I'm here by to represent uh, <coughs> our ambassador, uh, His Excellency Hassan Mweta, who could not be here because of unavoidable reasons. Uh, first of all, I should also take this opportunity to thank uh, Honorable Tino Manga for inviting us to participate in this good uh, conference because, as you know, Tanzania is also a stakeholder uh, for different dynamics which happened during colonial period. period. As you know, the history of uh, Tanzania and Germany is traced back from 1891 to uh, 1920 during colonial era. era where by German uh, colonized Tanzania and some Africa and some other African countries. So for we, Tanzania, we have got three issues uh, to put forward. Now I want to put them forward in front of you so that maybe during your deliberations you can take to you can consider them. The first issue is uh, Tanzania's interest, especially scientific and research related to archaeological remains of dinosaur from Tendaguru. Uh, especially uh, Germans, they, you are aware that here in Germany, especially in Berlin, Berlin Nat Natua Kunde, Natua Kunde Museum, it is the remains of dinosaur which were taken from Tanzania. Now, the issues here is like this. Children here in Germany pay, pay, they, they, the children pay 10 euros to go and see the remains of the dinosaur, of which they can learn, see what type of that animal which was existing in that particular time, because those type of animal, they are not, they are no longer available in this way. So the remains, so people can learn about it. Now the question is, what about the uh, children of Tanzania? How are they benefiting from, out of this uh, uh, remains of uh, dinosaur? So that is the issue. So what you are saying that now, I think there is high time now to consider how the children of Tanzania could also benefit from these remains. That, that is one issue. The second issue is the Tanzanians' interest relating to collection of works, works of arts and the cultural material. I think you, uh, Germans, you are also aware that some of the cultural uh, works Materials were taken from 
Tanzania, any other African country, I can say. So what we are saying now is that if you take someone's uh, cultural arts in the material, it means you are depriving that uh, nation their cultural heritage. So what we are saying is that I think now it's high time that to consider that those uh, work of arts in the cultural materials which we are taken from Tanzania during colonial area to, to be returned back to Tanzania. That is the, that is the second issue. And now, the third issue is concerning uh, the return of the remains of human bodies from Tanzania. And if possible, a uh, German could, could think about uh, giving compensation to Tanzania. I think all of uh, Germans, they are aware that uh, the remains of dead bodies uh, like uh, schools, uh, skeletons, skeletons were also taken from uh, Tanzania. These were uh, uh, warriors during the war called Majimaj, famous Majimaj, which was fought between 1905 to 1907 between Tanzanians, uh, uh, those he heroes, and Germans. Now, this resulted to a number of deaths, exhaust body, which uh, we are to, uh, the, the remains of the body were also taken from uh, Tanzania to and German. Most of them, I, I know, I know that they they've been put in a charity museum in a Berlin and uh, in some uh, museum like medical story in Berlin or something. But according to our uh, statistics, we know that there are a number of 226 remains of human uh, body here in Germany. Now, the issue is this existence of this uh, body here uh, shows, give a proof that there are a little bit some injustice during Crony. But that is as past because this one, was, this one was done by our ancestors. So this one is finished. What we know that Germany and Tanzania are close friends, we need to forget about the past and focus about the future. That is the main issue. So those are the main issues, uh, the main three issues that I want to put forward to you. But now, whenever there is uh, problems, there are always prospects. Now, the prospect is that the Honorable President of uh, Germany, uh, His Excellency Frank Walter Steinmeier, four, four days ago, visited Tanzania where I uh, was able to talk with our president, uh, High Excellency Samia Suwasan. They discussed a lot, and he was taken to this Songia, Songia or Puma region, whereby uh, the war, much, much war happened, 1905 to 1907. He saw, he could be able to saw the remains of the maybe graves and uh, all those things. So the good thing that uh, the excellence, uh, his excellence president of German, apologized to Tanzania to what happened during the colonial era and promised to return the remains of the uh, dead boy from here, German to Tanzania. That's what I'm saying that there is a prospect. So, uh, to finalize, uh, to conclude my, my remarks, is that, first of all, I'm also interested to hear what is going to be discussed here. So, I wish you all the best, good deliberation in your uh, presentation, so that I think a representative and delegate from different countries, when they go out, eat, out of here, they will go with some prospects which will enable to, to enhance the relationship between the German and the district and other countries, like Tanzania and other countries, but also to benefit the future the relation. With those remarks, thank you very much, and I'm wishing you all the best. Yeah, dear Mr. Defense uh, thank you very much for coming, for, for addressing us here, and also thank you for pointing out these these issues, and I hope they will, um, that your wishes and, and, and the requests will become reality very soon, and I hope this very much also for, for the other countries, the other areas, the former colonies. Um, so before we now start with Michael Falser and the introduction uh, to the overall conference topic, 
just a, a couple of practicalities. Um, so you, you all made your way into this room. So you, you already got an idea about the university and how it works. Um, when you leave this room on the left hand side are stairs and one level further down, there are toilets. There are also signs, so you should be able to find this. Um, then um, we have the program. We don't have program flyers, but there are these QR codes that you can scan. So you can have it on your mobile phone and we have also these laminated sheets. And um, what you can see is that we have a very tight and dense program. So it will be very intense and uh, <laughs> looking forward to also to, to have a good time management and, and that everybody is or everyone can restrict themselves in time of, and their speaking time. And you also see that we have coffee breaks. So out here there will be uh, um, yeah, coffee and, and water. Then today there is a lunch break at 1.30. And a lunch break, for this lunch break, the, the speakers, they uh, received these little vouchers was there for the university canteen. Um, and then during the lunch break, we will walk there together. So it's just, uh, if you leave the main exit, uh, building at the main exit, turn right, cross the street, and then there on the right-hand side, it's, it's called Mensa. So this is the, the place uh, where we can eat. Uh, you're also free, um, so the non-speakers are free to join us, but you have to pay for your lunch yourself. Sorry for that. Um, or you're also free to go to another place and order something, but uh, in, yeah, if you look at the program, please don't order something that takes one hour to prepare, then you will be late. So we really have to stay within time. Um, and at 6 uh, p.m., and hopefully we're done by then, and then we have a little get together here with a couple of drinks and you're all welcome to, to stay with us and to get uh, into discussions. And tomorrow the program is a little bit shorter. So uh, we start at 10 a.m. again here, we just have a coffee break and we, hope to wrap up at around 1.30, so that at 2 p.m. Uh, we, we are done. And during your um, presentation, probably Dr. Helmut will get up and will show you a sheet with a, a five. That means you have five minutes left to speak, then a two and a one, so one, two minutes left, one minute left. This is just, uh, please take this as a friendly reminder, because if you really run out of time, everything will be postponed. So if she stands up and shows you this number, please consider uh, if you are able to go through your whole presentation or if you have to, to skip a couple of, uh, of slides. So I'm just looking at time now. Um, it's 9.27, so Michael, do you want to add something or otherwise we uh, should wait until 9.30 for the online uh, participants and then we can start with the introduction to the conference done by Michelle Fals. Um, yeah, again, welcome everyone. Here, Kultu Atashi from uh, Tanzania. We are so pleased that you could uh, come to us, to this place, and to help us organizing it in terms of uh, your welcoming words and a good, very important agenda you already gave us to, to help the intercultural dialogue uh, towards, uh, as you said, a good prospect for the future collaboration. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Tino Maga, uh, thank you very much for uh, your nice introduction also in our nice collaboration between uh, ECMOS Germany and the TUM. And it's my pleasure to, um, to introduce the, the, the conference um, in the next uh, half an hour to give you um, an idea of how this collaboration came together. Second, to give you a thought of um, or an uh, in a view into the current status of research. So why we're meeting it, what kind of scientific background in particular German context we are sharing. And where do we start and where are the desiderata that the contract makes so interesting and important? And um, then some insights into, um, uh, Tino, you mentioned it um, from the research project had been installed in the TU Mitchell already to uh, help to um, prepare uh, the grounds for our discussion here. So thank you so much for your help. You saw how efficient this is. Um, Tino, you already mentioned it. I mean, the conference can't, couldn't be more actual in the at any politics, in a sense. Um, we know that the political issue will not be in the very center of our conference because we share, uh, we will talk, talk about uh, cultural heritage in the sense of the built fabric still existing in the previous German colonies. But we see that the German uh, president was in Tanzania just now and um, gave us, you mentioned it, um, some... some uh, um, you know, uh, plan to, to work on for the good future. Um, also, um, when you go through um, public media and for the last years, I mean, uh, more and more uh, themed volumes um, as, a, as a, on the public, uh, general public side are 
are, are circulated in different um, um, uh, journals around the world. For example, here the Edition de Multiplomatique. So you see the diplomatic side. And the title is um, On the Ruins of Empire, um, History and Presence of Colonialism. And I would take this, um, just the wording, as a, as a starting point, because we are uh, also working on uh, partly uh, ruined buildings from the colonial empires now standing in, 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 in independent nation states. So this is, should be a triggering little um, 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 photograph. And one of these kind of ruins presented uh, was already included, as you saw it, in the conference flyer, which is the, the BOMA uh, kind of uh, governmental um, a representation in, um, in Bagamoyo in Tanzania, where I had the pleasure to visit. And this is one of these photographs already joined into the into the program. Um, the um, cooperation between um, uh, the research that I'm conducting and in ICOMOS um, International, but also Germany, um, has a longer history, and we are happy to refer to this. Um, there was one, um, already a conference in 2011 at Heidelberg uh, University, where I worked before with a, a book that you can see outside on the table um, on um, the concept of cultural heritage and transcultural mode. And one of the authors in this volume is, for example, Klaus-Peter Echter, and, and he will chair the second session. So how, how wonderful that our collaboration continues. And we had also um, a, a workshop in Florence in 2014, where the general ICOMOS uh, uh, conference um, um, gathering was anyway. And as you know, there is a, um, a shared built heritage committee, both in the German context, but also on the international ICOMOS context. So also this collaboration continues and I want to send my greeting words uh, to all the organizers and, and still um, present um, 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 experts in the Shared Built Heritage Committee. With Siegfried Enders, I hope he's uh, online and joining us. So we send the greeting words to him and uh, all the best. Um, I want to just refer to um, um, a research element that was guiding me towards the project today is that um, when we talk about the colonial history of heritage, um, there is spent on some, some particular um, a reference to questions of how colonial empires themselves already worked towards what we today consider cultural heritage. So how colonial um, empires in the uh, colonies were uh, targeting um, built heritage already in the colonies and tackling them from three different sides, also important for the um, setup of our conference, I will come back to this. What we consider the socio factors, the social culture, which kind of institutions were involved to deal with remains and buildings on the site, which kind of uh, uh, experts traveling between the colonial empires and the colonies were working in this, which kind of disciplines were involved. And the mental world, the mental culture is which kind of value systems had been applied to uh, say, this is important, these sites need to be preserved, researched, and mapped, and which were not mapped back then, already in the colonial period. And the artifacts, finally, the material culture is the link of um, um, the buildings themselves. On the left side, you would see um, a, a context where I was working in the French colonial period in Indochina, where a colonial, a French colonial empire was, of course, uh, primarily interested in, in um, um, the temples of Cambodia and Angkor, for example. But what is important to say in the entrance uh, words is that um, the nation building processes towards independence in, in today's independent nation states coming from the colonial uh, uh, period and then becoming independent, but also sharing about their cultural heritage in museums and sites can also be an issue of the for, for former colonial empires themselves, like in Germany themselves. You have similar uh, processes going on. When Germany got reunified, Berlin became the capital again um, of a unified Germany, and not not by accident. Then would, uh, there was a reconstruction going on of the, with, you know, the, the Berlin uh, city castle, and inside the nation state now is gathering uh, um, ethnographical, archaeological uh, findings from the colonial period, also from the colonial period, and now staging them inside uh, a building in the capital of Germany. So the the issue of of um, cultural heritage and displaying them and how to deal with them is not only an affair in the now independent nation states, but also back then in Europe, um, we can ask the same questions. And this is um, one particular element I want to show here. 
is that also the, the foreign minister Baerbock was was then um, in uh, Nigeria talking about the restitution of of artifacts, uh, the Benin bronzes that you know. So you see also the German engagement with uh, uh, tackling this uh, complicated colonial history is very vivid and very very strong and hopefully leading towards a, a good uh, uh, agenda for the future. What is um, leading, uh, guiding me to the first, let's say, desideratum um, leading towards our conference is that we can see that the first engagement from Germany and other colonial, ex-colonial uh, empires towards the now independent nation states and colonies is that the discussions um, started to be more related towards ethnographic and archaeological collections and artifacts, so mo mobile artifacts, and the issue of re restitution. And um, so you will see here some uh, publications I'm, I'm showing that um, the discussion is not yet focused on built heritage, but just on mobile artifacts heritage, reconstituted exchange research. So our conference is dealing with this first desideratum. Uh, the second um, issue is that uh, since quite a while, um, um, from the history, the, the discipline of global history, uh, there were research uh, now implemented on showing that that the colonial endeavor was very short, but already a global one. So we need a discipline called global history to tackle the colonial history of Germany across at least three continents, which is Oceania, Asia, like in China, and Africa. So. Um, but what we can see also from this, uh, on the right side, you see there was an exhibition in the in the uh, uh, historical museum in, in in Berlin, is that when you go through the catalog, um, the issue of cultural heritage and build remain in terms of city planning is uh, touched only marginally. So you see again, we are we are helping uh, to fill this gap. And if you go through so many wonderful, interesting uh, research, you can see also development from questions on there are all, all, also colonial traces within Germany, museum sites, street names, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you see some of these wonderful and important publications going through. Then also seeing that there was a research on on Berlin as the colonial metropole in a sense, um, which uh, you could see uh, recent uh, publications about it. and only slightly the research on, on landscapes and townscapes are now getting back into the previous colonies, where you see on the upright side um, uh, sites of memory within the previous colonies, for example, Namibia. That brings us more into architectural history. Um, the second desideratum is um, that there is wonderful um, and very, very useful uh, preliminary and uh, research already done, so we are not pretending to be the first one to think about it. But from the architectural history, we can see that from 1981 onwards, with the magnificent uh, work of Walter Peters, who we have the pleasure to welcome here also as a speaker, uh, we're dealing the architectural histories in the compartments of uh, uh, individual colonies. So you see there were uh, publications from Southwest Africa, on Cameroon, on Togo, uh, on the right side, for example, from China. But, and that continues in, 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 in more uh, actual research until the last years, where you would see it's still a compartmentalized, uh, let's say, geographical entities being treated, something like it is Africa, it is China or the South Seas. But what we need when we sh look in, 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 in other, color, in other um, now nation states in, in Europe, uh, there's already a, a development of uh, going from area studies by treating individual colonies colonial contexts, also in presence, and towards a more global outreach of comparing the different colonies of one colonial empire all together as an, in a global perspective. So for example, the French and English um, research uh, has been already uh, uh, paving the ground here. And I think the global architectural history of the uh, German colonial era is something that, that needs to be tackled. Uh, the more so because we can see here, for example, of a map uh, that was uh, circulated in 1911 in one of these um, uh, 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 grand public uh, dictionaries, I want to say, that the reader back then already in 1911, for example, would have this understanding of uh, um, a global colonial uh, coloniality of Germany across the globe. And this is something that will guide us also in our conference. As you see in the organization of the panels, we are not focusing 
on colonies step by step, but we try to merge different questions on dealing with built heritage across the colonies, which is something that is um, important to do. And I want to just give you some, uh, uh, some insights into exactly uh, this doubled agenda that has been installed here with the DFG, a German research foundation's um, a research project that I'm uh, directing since in which is the one hand side covering the German colonial architecture as a global project and second as a transcultural heritage today across the uh, independent nation states existing today. Um, just to give you some insights is that um, one of the starting points was a theme volume and the Kunstchronik who can see this uh, journal outside and, and have a look in it. it, it therefore it was uh, called a German a co a global spaces of German colonialism terms and methods, case studies, and disciplinary cross-connections, where I tried to bring global studies from different viewpoints into a debate, into a, in, a interdisciplinary dialogue. So would, uh, not only architectural and art history, but we would also have museum studies, um, language studies, because all the literaturwissenschaften in the colonial period, so colonial linguistic, for example, we would have religious studies, we have infrastructure planning research, we have knowledge structure research, and um, also prominence research in, in museums. So this was the first idea to bring different disciplines and the global approach together into a dialogue. And then they had with uh, the exhibition um, where uh, we tried in a, co um, a cooperation with the Central Institute of Art History just uh, across the street, I wanted to say just down there the, the road, where we uh, I could um, um, curate an exhibition on exactly the German built uh, heritage in a global perspective uh, where and we try to bring um, original published literature, print material from the, from, from the colonial period into a comparative display across the colonies. So here, for example, you would have uh, um, um, publications from Samoa, cross-reference to Douala in, in Cameroon, cross-reference to, uh, to Togo and to other sites to see, for example, here, the way of how vernacular architecture had been treated and appropriated by a new style from the German architecture. Or for example, um, at the, uh, the resulting um, a catalog that has been produced, you can also see it on our book table, where uh, we could gather 60 international authors uh, to, to take one individual architectural source from the colonial period and to try to write a, a little bit, a piece of a, of a connected global architectural history across the colonies. Um, taking uh, one one um, historical element uh, thing uh, source uh, from one the other. For example, handbooks from the colonial period, where uh, where uh, colonial settlers would be instructed to build their houses uh, uh, from Samoa into China into all the African colonies. And in these uh, guidebooks, the global approach um, across colonies had been already tackled. Or for example, uh, books on train building, um, infrastructural planning. Uh, overall literature that is going across across the colonies. And here, for example, an issue of uh, the visual memory actually already producing in the colonial time where you have the first uh, color photography circulated for commemorative volumes. Very interesting topic. And the last one here, for example, um, and the issue of um, traveling postcards from the period where you would easily see um, a building from the South Seas uh, sent to Germany with a stamp, and you see how the globality was produced through a lo uh, global media called postcards. But the next desideratum we are tackling and in the conference is that, yes, a global architectural history from the colonies had not been written yet um, for Germany, but we are also tackling another moment that, um, for example, French, and, and uh, you compare here the French literature as a sample, there might be others, is that we still need to con confer a, a reference um, or bring global architectural history approaches into global architectural heritage resource. So this is actually an agenda we are having uh, today by cross-reference different um, methods and, and practices to deal with this uh, German colonial built heritage in the colonies across the, across, uh, the continents, actually. And this is uh, how, how this conference was, was set up. Um, to to create this uh, dialogue uh, across disciplines uh, for heritage research. And the second one is the transcultural heritage um, approach that is also dealing in the, in the Munich conference. 
um, which is, of course, I have to say, from a white male university research eye, which is a shortcoming, and that's why we have this conference today to get into a dialogue with experts in the field in the independent nation states in Africa. But I mean, my case, I'm trying to travel to these uh, countries and to conduct something like a first global survey of a German colonial architecture across the continents and to kind of cre recreate a visual memory of what is actually still standing, which is totally unclear. Uh, I don't think so many, many people know about how, how massive amount of buildings are still standing in, in, the, in, the, in these nation states today. And so I'm kind of mapping this physical status, not in a complete sense, because this would last for maybe 10 years to do this, but it's a start to, to get the visual memory kind of implemented into future research as we are doing here. By doing a mapping this, I also try to um, group uh, building types and, um, and to uh, group them also in groups of um, how they're going to be treated in a, let's say, decolonizing way, how they got out of just the built history of their Im embedding into how they are treated today or not treated today or transformed, etc. And I give you just some, uh, some slides. Um, 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 I was not yet traveling to Samoa, but this is uh, one of the last tragic losses of, of the built uh, German uh, heritage in, 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 for example, here in the south, in the, in the Oceanian arena, which is in Samoa, where just the old standing courthouse, you can see it on the upper left side, was, was torn down in 2020 for uh, not so easily... Uh, 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 useful arguments, maybe for an election and then kind of bringing up the either debate on a colonial past. And this was the largest still standing building in, in all Oceania, maybe, and it was torn down. So one strategy here is destruction and demolition. You could also say that a decolonizing moment to get um, to terms with the buildings is to destroy them. This is one of uh, one one strategy that you or one process uh, you could see across, of course, uh, all, all, the, all the countries we have to treat in. But then I, I had the pleasure, to, I'm now showing just two um, uh, field studies from Tanzania and China in a comparative sense for just five minutes. It's, for example, the old telegraph station in Bukoba, you can see on the lower right side, the giant telegraph situation. But now if you go, it's standing next to the Victoria Lake. And just now you see this very uh, strange, uh, ruined kind of concrete block standing in the middle of nowhere. And you could say it's a kind of fragmentation of architectural heritage. And of course, related to oblivion, because if you ask people playing maybe soccer around what kind of buildings you're standing here, not all of them have the history um, about them. So you could see one decolonizing moment is oblivion. Um, another one, um, photographing the old hospital in, in Tanga in Tanzania, uh, it's, for example, di a functional discontinuation where you could see that uh, buildings like a hospital here would be neglected and they fall out of use, so then crumbling away. So maybe a uh, functional discontinuation, neglect, and gradual re uh, ruination is one uh, one process that we we will see also today. It continues when whole infrastructure networks are now out of use, like the Uzabara railway line in in Tan northern Tanzania, northeastern Tanzania, where. I was standing in front of this uh, wonderful trade station where you could even have a kind of a cowboy kind of perfect film, you know, where mm -hmm. the high noon, uh, you know, this kind of situation, because this is a fantastic building. But I mean, the train connection has been just out of line, uh, out of use. And that's why uh, once one process is just uh, the, the issue of being out of use. Another one, and that is the photograph that you know from the folder, is that um, ruins can then be preserved in their ruined out of use function, but still protected and is that turned into a historical monument and commodified in a touristic parkour through, through a city, which is another strategy, strategy uh, um, to, to deal with this um, complicated heritage. Um, also, the change of use and presentation in museum sites. We will in this conference also deal museums that had been um, placed within original German colonial structures and now dealing with a double medium of education, um, and agenda, and commemoration. You would see one in Arusha, uh, an old Boma 
uh, governmental um, um, headquarter, I would say, in Arusha and Tanzania versus, for example, an old Franks industrial um, complex of, of um, um, mining where the still standing houses are turned into a museum today. Um, this is one of uh, these photographs that had been uh, in my mind for quite a while. It's uh, also a decolonizing moment in structural replacement. What you can see on the left side is the old train station Dar es Salaam, and the right side is just the new infrastructural system financed by China coming together. And you see it not only the scale change, but also the change in material, the change in aesthetics, the change for so many things. But it's also a decolonizing moment because previously original colonial systems of infrastructure got replaced by modernization, for example. One thing what uh, was also interesting to see is the way of appropriation also of kind of evaluation in terms of a, a using buildings just simply very differently. I mean, this is on the left side at Qingdao in China, where I could see the old German Asia Bank, which is, I mean, the headquarter of imperial um, economics, turned by whatever process is involved into small housing, I mean, apartments. So I would discuss with this wonderful Chinese family how they live in, the, uh, in one of the most representative uh, imperialist buildings uh, within the city. Another decolonizing moments we could, we could speculate. Or uh, buildings like the old uh, Qingdao Old Observatory now turned into a, a, a landmark within a military site. But of course, the observation is now a totally different affair with satellites uh, around the planet. But the building is still standing, so you would still have an adoptive reuse element and structural consolidation because the building is, ni is nicely restored, but it is um, not in the original function anymore. And then you have also, of course, infrastructural elements. We will deal with this um, uh, also in a paper where simply in incredibly large infrastructural elements such as bridges are still standing in the, in the countryside, I would say, in the landscape. And they are just uh, so large that they cannot be easily replaced. I mean, part of them had been replaced, but uh, this is another issue. So technical improvement. And of course, the most logic element is um, functional continuity, like a hospital in Dar es Salaam, like a trade station in Kugoma, Tanzania on the left side, an old and new school building in Qingdao in China, or churches around uh, Catholic and Protestant churches still standing in all, uh, almost all uh, previous colonies uh, showing you here today. But the last um, 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 process involved is also kind of a trivialization, over-commodification, and even a colonial nostalgia, uh, nostalgia involved, where on the upper right side, you might uh, remember this photograph from our call for papers, where uh, the old uh, Qingdao railway station was first torn down and for many uh, different reasons, then reconstructed. So we have a reconstructed colonial building in a post-colonial nation state called China, with a very interesting debate on why this happened and how this happened, who wanted to do this and which kind of processes were being involved. And then the last one is kind of a, also a fake and a historical reinventions of buildings that has never been there for on the left side in Tianjin, where the Germany and Austria, Austria, for example, had concessions there, and these buildings are totally reinventions. They had never been standing there. So another kind of decolonizing way through commodity, over commodification, I would say. On the right side is a shopping mall. Never been there. So in this research, we have a kind of a, a checklist of different ways of decolonization through um, dealing with the built fabric. From destruction to continuous to urbanization. This is just a, an overall checklist that I developed, but, and this is the most important thing with my last slide of the presentation is, that now this is just, again, a photographic survey of, a, I can say it again, a white male, a researcher from a university in Germany with a, with a photograph traveling to places. I mean, this is a nice affair and I know my, my shortcomings in the debate because now we're having this conference of, again, talking about the social cultures involved in these countries, the value systems involved for protecting, restoring, researching uh, ex-colonial buildings, and of course the buildings themselves. <laughs>